In this video, I'm going to talk about signs and symptoms for the clinical diagnosis of osteoarthritis of the hip. Enroll in our online course now. Link is in the video description. Hi, and welcome back to PhysioTutors. The diagnosis of osteoarthritis has often been based on radiographic appearance of the joint space according to the criteria of Kellgren and Lawrence rather than clinical features. However, recent research has shown that radiographic imaging and the amount of pain and limitation a patient experiences does not have as strong of a correlation as once believed. More so, central sensitization and psychosocial factors might play an important role in explaining which patients with radiographic osteoarthritis experience pain and which don't. The clinical classification criteria by Altman et al. from the year 1991 have a sensitivity of 86% and a specificity of 75%, which is why we give them a moderate clinical value. The clinical classification criteria contain the presence of hip pain plus the following items. One, hip internal rotation range of motion of less than 15 degrees, two, hip flexion range of motion of 115 degrees or less, or hip pain plus one, hip internal rotation range of motion of 15 degrees or more, two, pain on hip internal rotation testing, three, morning stiffness of less than 60 minutes, which is an important factor to distinguish osteoarthritis from rheumatoid arthritis, in which case stiffness is usually lasting longer than that, and for age older than 50 years due to the fact that the prevalence increases with increasing age with a peak around 78 to 79 years. As mentioned earlier, radiographs alone do not define the clinical syndrome of osteoarthritis. Kim et al. from 2015 showed in two big cohorts that only 20% of hips with confirmed radiographic hip osteoarthritis were frequently painful. This is a good message as it opens up possibilities for an effective treatment, including load management, strengthening, mobility exercises, and maybe more importantly, proper patient education and explanation of how psychosocial factors might contribute to the patient's individual pain experience. All right, if you like, watch our video on the cluster of Sutliff for hip osteoarthritis on the left. Links to the reference literature of this video are in the description down below. You can also find links to our ebook, app, and extensive online course in the description as well. And as always, don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you are new to our channel. This was Andreas for PhysioTutors. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.